the first day on the job. Before you arrive at the job, make sure that you have showered and are wearing an effective deodorant and suitable footwear. Place your mobile phone and other personal items in a bag in the truck. You should also have clean, tidy hair, tied back if it's long, and look presentable. Introduce yourself and the team to the client, speaking clearly and politely. Make sure your footwear is appropriate for where you are working and check with the client that they are happy for you to walk on their floor coverings. Do a walkthrough of the home with the client, making sure you both understand how the move will take place and taking note of any special instructions they may have in regards to precious items or the house layout. Make sure to be attentive and reassuring at all times. Lunch and rest breaks are to be taken outside in an area designated by the client. Establish with the client that it is all right for your team to use their bathroom during the move and where you can get water while you're working. Under no circumstances is your team to smoke in the client's home or consume alcohol while working. Obscene language is never to be used in the presence of the client. Before lifting any heavy items, it is imperative that you have limbered up by stretching. Make sure again that your clothes are tidy and tucked in. When working in public areas, you must wear a high-vis vest. You should also have gloves for handling heavy items and a hat and sunblock. It is imperative that you have thoroughly surveyed your work area and identified any potential risks or hazards. Such hazards should be marked down on your risk assessment form. A team member must fill out the form before work commences. You and your co-workers should always work together as a team, keeping constant verbal and visual contact. Always know what your team members are doing when carrying objects together. Use a set route to avoid collision when carrying items in and out of the house. Protecting items when carrying. It is vitally important to make sure your client's items are protected when being transported. This will mean that you need to be aware of any damage that could occur to the client's furniture, including scratching. Before moving any item, inspect it for any pre-existing scratches or marks. Make sure you note these on your paperwork. Check that you are not wearing any rings, belts or buttons that could cause scratches. If you are using any equipment to help move the items, make sure all rough or hard surfaces are covered with a protective layer. Ensure all hazards have been identified in the path from the house to the truck, such as hoses, children's toys, pets and other objects. You do not want to trip and fall causing damage to yourself and the item. Equipment. The barrow, also called a trolley, can be used for moving boxes, white goods and metal cabinets. Ensure that the wheels of the barrow run smoothly and check that there are no rough edges that could damage the items to be moved. The Samson. This can also be called a piano trolley. It is used for moving heavy items and pianos on a flat surface. The dolly is a flat tray on four wheels and is used for moving desks and some heavy furniture items. To move the cartons, first tip the cartons away from the barrow Slide the barrow lip under and put a foot on the barrow rail. Tilt the barrow back until the handles are in a comfortable position for wheeling. When walking down a ramp, let the weight of the barrow work with you. It must go first. When walking up a ramp, you go first, pulling the barrow towards you. If the item is too heavy, have a teammate help by pushing. Make sure the door of the fridge is on the side with the handle facing down. Put a foot on the barrow rail and tilt the barrow back towards your body. 
It is important to have two team members working together when using a Samson. While one team member tips the heavy item away from himself, the other team member places the Samson underneath the item, making sure it is under the long part of the item. The team member holding the item should lower the full weight onto the Samson in a smooth and deliberate movement. The back of the item should be in line with the side of the Samson. Place the protective blanket inside the top lid of the piano for greater protection. The team members can now wheel it to its destination. Tilt the desk towards your partner. Have them place the dolly underneath the desk. With the load on the dolly, stand the desk up. The dolly should be fitting squarely underneath the item. Wheel to the new position or out to the truck. Remove the item from the dolly. Know your wrapping materials. During the course of a removal, you will need to be familiar with the different sorts of protective coverings that are available to protect the furniture and household items. There are several different sized boxes available, including the book carton, the standard carton, the porter robe, and the picture carton. These soft woven ties are used to prevent furniture moving during transit. They are designed to prevent rubbing and burn marks on furniture. Furniture pads are either made of felt or are a coarse quilted blanket. They are designed to wrap large items completely to prevent scratches and bumps. When wrapping items, ensure all surfaces are covered by the pad and the ends are tucked into the wrapping. Bubble wrap is used to protect delicate items like statues and artworks. The paper used for wrapping items should be clean butcher's paper and clean tissue paper. Newspaper is never used. Tape is used to seal the boxes and in some instances to secure wrapping in place. It should never come into contact with any items of furniture. This causes damage to shiny surfaces as well as white goods. Safety in and around the truck. Your vehicle is considered your place of work. That means you should always keep the cabin clean and tidy and hazard free. Smoking in the truck is not allowed. At the end of the working day, it is your responsibility to remove all rubbish and personal items and ensure it is left in a clean and tidy condition for the next day. When getting out of a truck, never go frontwards always back down, maintaining three points of contact with the truck. Grasp the front hand door grip with one hand, place a foot on the truck's upper step, steady yourself with your other hand and step down. Before parking, check for obstructions, including overhead wires and overhanging branches. If parking on private property, including a client's, check with the owner that where you intend to park is okay and will not cause obstruction. 
Remember, it may be there all day, so check that no vehicles are blocked from exiting the driveway. If you are parking on a public road, remember to be wearing your high-vis clothing and place at least three traffic control triangles 50 metres from the front and rear of the truck and one to the side of the truck. Discuss with the driver exactly where the truck is to be positioned and make sure you both understand the hand signals. Place yourself at the back right-hand corner of the truck so the driver can see your hand signals. Allow enough room for walk-up boards when positioning the truck and make sure there is a clear path from the walk-up boards to the access point.